Hey Keto Clan, this week we're talking about cheating. Welcome back. So if you guys saw my short earlier this week, you know that the end of last week, I took three days and just ate whatever I wanted. I'm not gonna recap all of that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link right here up to that short and you could go ahead and watch it when you're done with this one. What I wanna do in this full length video is talk about is it okay to cheat on a keto diet? And I mean, the short answer is yes, it is. But there, there are some guidelines, there are some rules that you want to pay attention to, uh, to make sure that you don't completely go off the rails and it makes it harder to get back on the train, okay? Uh, so the first one is there are different ways to go about uh, cheating on your keto diet. Um, first and foremost, you definitely want to plan the day or in my case it was three days um, my kids were here visiting uh, the those three days I wanted to enjoy everything with them um, the same way they were enjoying it it was planned uh, there was no oops I don't consider it cheating because it was planned right uh, cheating is something that you're not supposed to do but if you're planning on it and you give yourself permission to do it then it's not cheating, right? And then it's just part of your lifestyle. And remember, keto is not a diet, it's a lifestyle, right? So the two different ways that you can give yourself permission to deviate from your typical eating habits, we'll call it that, that was a mouthful though, right? Never mind. Instead of staying real super low, like, counting your macros and everything like that, right? You could actually just give yourself permission to not worry about your macros, not worry about your calories, not worry about anything and just eat that day. Uh, more than likely, you're still going to stay relatively low carb because that's what you're used to. Especially if you've been in this lifestyle for long enough if you are keto adapted, if you've been keto adapted for long enough, you're really not gonna have the cravings uh, for a whole lot of carbs and you will probably find that if you just stop counting, stop keeping track for that day, you're still probably gonna do a lot better than what you think you would. The next way is to actually just go full board eating the carbs the candy bars, the pizza, the, the all the junk food and the snack foods and the sodas and all that stuff just go no holds barred. This is the way I typically plan it. The way I see it is if I'm going to deviate from my lifestyle for one, two, three days, I'm going to make it worth it. <laughs> but that's me. Uh, I also have done this in the past, and I know that I'm able to get right back on it without any problem whatsoever. Uh, I recommend if it's the first time that you're deviating from your lifestyle, don't plan on going full board, don't plan on driving over the cliff like I do, okay? Uh, and that brings us to rule number two. You do want to make it worth it. Why deviate from your lifestyle if it's not going to be worth it, if you're not going to get some kind of enjoyment out of it? That's why we deviate. Um, we need to fulfill something, whether in my case it's enjoying the days with my children um, or uh, fulfilling something within you, maybe uh, cooking an amazing spaghetti with homemade pasta is something that you've always really enjoyed and you don't allow yourself to do that anymore because of the keto lifestyle that you've chosen to, to lead. Well, if it's something like that on your cheat day, plan on doing that. Make it 
worth it. My favorite food in the world is pizza. On my cheat days, on my days that I deviate, I eat pizza. Like, I'm talking I order Domino's. Domino's was always my, and has always been, uh, one of my favorite chain pizza places. I get myself some Domino's. Uh, yeah, I've got my keto alternatives. I can make fat head dough. I can make uh, chaffles in a, in a panini press and use that as the crust. Absolutely, and I do that. And it's awesome, and it fulfills that need uh, when, I'm, when I'm not deviating from the lifestyle. But there's nothing like actually eating that slice of real pizza. And there's no reason why we have to never do these things again. We just plan it. We be careful. When we're done, we get right back to our lifestyle. Remember, quality is so much more important than quantity. You don't need to eat three pizzas from CC's and all you can eat pizza place when you could have three or four slices of the really super high quality pizza that you love, um, that you miss from before you decided to go on your keto lifestyle. Keep the quality high, make sure it's worth it. Now, for step three, when is it okay for you to start thinking about and start planning a cheat day, cheat day, uh, a deviation day? I like to give a general rule of thumb of make sure you could stay on your plan, stay in your lifestyle for a year. Now, is that a hard fast rule? Absolutely not. It's more of a guideline that I used for myself and it worked. Uh, after a year, I didn't have any problem putting that stuff aside again and starting up on my lifestyle. No problem at all. Now, I have seen other people who have the willpower to do that much earlier and then I've seen other people that know themselves well enough that they don't want to even try that. So they go years and years and years and never allow themselves a deviation then. No matter what it is, the biggest thing is you need to trust yourself. Do you think, are you confident that at the end of all this, the one, two, three days, or even if it's just one meal, are you confident that when you wake up that morning that you've decided that it is time to put my game face back on, that you will be able to do it? That is when it is okay to plan something. When you are confident that it will only be the one day, that you will be able to follow that plan. One way to kind of gauge this is are you still having really strong cravings for things that your lifestyle, your keto lifestyle, doesn't allow? Does it cause you anxiety still? Are you still having to force yourself to stay away from certain things? Do you still have a hard time watching your friends eat a slice of pizza? Do you still lick your lips? when you pass the candy aisle when you're checking out at the grocery store. These are signs that you may not be ready for a cheat day. If you could go through your whole day, you could go through your whole week or your whole month, and you don't have that anxiety and you don't have to exert willpower, then it might be time to allow yourself to deviate. One, two days, one, two meals have a plan to get back. Number four is probably the most important one. You need to give yourself permission. It's okay. It is. All things in moderation, right? It's okay to have a beer 
it's not okay to have 37 beers and get in the car. All things in moderation. Water. If you drink too much water all at once, it will kill you. But you have to have water to live. All things in moderation. These deviation days that I'm talking about and the things that you are going to be putting into your face during these deviation days, they're not going to kill you, more than likely. Keep it in moderation and give yourself permission to do so. You're not doing anything wrong if you plan it out, you give yourself permission, and you get right back to it when you're done. If you're getting any value at all out of this video, my videos, I want you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, like this video, share this video out, because remember, as soon as I get to 100 subs, anybody who has commented on any of my videos, you might just be winning yourself one of these. This is a breath ketone meter, this is the one that I use, and this is the one that I will send out to you. Now, a real quick follow-up on the shorts. Uh, from earlier this week and my whole journey in testing out uh, cheating for the three days uh, with my boys and uh, what it's done. Uh, if you guys recall, uh, I did gain 12 pounds during those three days. I was able to bring um, a significant amount down just after the first day. Uh, even the distension in my uh, abdomen had gone down after just the first day and this is what happened after four days. Now, I got my COVID shot the other day, so I have not uh, been on the scale or uh, done any further testing since then. I wanna make sure that my body regulates after that shot. But as you can see, I did end up being one pound lighter than I was before I started uh, the deviation. Again, I, I need to stop calling it cheating. It wasn't cheating, I gave myself permission. But. Uh, this just brings up another uh, potential benefit of using these deviation days. Um, there are a lot of people that end up with plateaus that they can't get any further in whatever health goal they have. And sometimes putting this junk back in our bodies kind of wakes it up. It makes our bodies go, whoa, what am I doing with this stuff? And it starts working extra hard, right? And then you go back to eating what you're supposed to be eating and your body goes oh okay let's get rid of all this junk and most of the time it ends up getting rid of more junk than just the junk that you put in yourself during that one deviation so that is something to keep in mind um, will it happen every time no could it be a tool if used properly absolutely up until now, we have been talking about four steps to take to plan and then execute your day of deviation or your cheat day. Step five is actually for the recovery. The main thing that you need to remember for your recovery is don't look back. You're not going that way. Treat your recovery day like the cheat days, like the deviation days didn't even happen. Just get back to whatever routine you were on before. And don't worry if you're having a hard time getting back on your intermittent fasting cycle. If you can't go 15 or 16 hours without eating, give yourself a snack. It's okay, just make sure it's a good healthy snack that fits your lifestyle. You didn't get to the point where you were fasting for 16 or 20 hours overnight you're not gonna be able to get back into it overnight either, but it should be a little bit easier. A couple of days of giving yourself a snack, you should be right back where you were. Now with all that said, I do wanna say, until next time, keto on.